Maybe you are thinking about running your first marathon. Maybe you are currently training for a marathon. Or maybe you have already experienced running a marathon. Whether you are a new marathon runner or even if you are a more experienced marathon runner, marathon race day fears will probably creep up on you. Here are nine common marathon race day fears and today I'm going to discuss with you how to overcome those fears. The first common fear marathon runners might face is not waking up on time before the marathon. This is still a fear of mine even after running 32 marathons. This is some of the reason that I don't sleep very well the night before the marathon. Just know that if you have trouble sleeping the night before the marathon, you are not alone. It is completely normal to experience this. If you don't get the best quality sleep before the marathon the night before, it is okay. Just make sure the week leading up to the marathon that you are getting good rest. So at least seven to nine hours of sleep per night before race day, especially the week leading up to it. So this is how you can ease your anxiety about not waking up on time on race day. This is what I would do to make sure you do not miss the race. I would set your alarm on your phone. I would have a friend or family member if they are staying with you at the hotel to set their alarm as well. And I also would have wake up service call from the hotel so that you can wake up. You want to have three backups so you are not going to miss the race. And surely you'll feel pretty confident if you have three backups, chances are you will probably wake up from one of those alarms. Besides setting an alarm, make sure you have set that alarm for at least two hours before the start of the race. This will allow plenty of time to get ready and eat your breakfast. Allow yourself plenty of time to get to the race. So don't be pushing it at the last minute trying to get to the start line. At least get there an hour before because this is going to allow you some time to go to the bathroom before the race starts because there will most likely be a line to the porter potties. So you want to get in line before the race so you have plenty of time and not feeling rushed going to the bathroom. This also allows you time to put your gear check bag in gear check so you have that at the end of the race for you waiting on you. So by doing these things, by getting up two hours before the race starts and getting to the start line at least an hour before the race will ease your anxiety at the start line. So you are confident to know that you feel as prepared as possible before you get started. The next common fear on marathon race day is feeling sick to your stomach during the race. I have a little bit of a sensitive stomach during the race. I can't really take in Gatorade because it really makes me not feel very well. It, it's just too much sugar. When I am drinking Gatorade and taking in gels during the race, that usually makes me feel like I'm going to get sick more. So I just kind of, I personally skip the Gatorade and I just stick to gels. But you, as you become a more experienced marathon runner, you will discover what is right for you. Allow at least 90 minutes before the race to eat your breakfast. This will give your stomach plenty of time to digest your breakfast and it'll also allow you opportunities to go to the bathroom before the race starts. So I would definitely at least eat 90 minutes before the race for your breakfast. By allowing 90 minutes, this will help you digest your breakfast better. If you are taking sports gels, Make sure you are not taking them with Gatorade. Only, never mix sports gels and Gatorade together. Only take sports gels with water. And make sure you are drinking plenty of water when you are taking your sports gels. You want to be able to wash it down because it will. those gels definitely have an aftertaste. And it gets into your bloodstream better if you take it with a good amount of water. So at least take it with a cup of water that they give you at the aid station. Now, at every aid station, you don't necessarily have to take the full glass of water, but at least be taking sips of water at the aid station. But when you are taking the sports gels, definitely try to drink the whole amount of water that they give you in the cup. Also, avoid taking... I know, I know there's runners out there that like to take anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen before the race. 
I suggest that it's best not to do that, especially if you have digestion issues. If you have digestion issues, ibuprofen is going to make the digestion process worse, and it could possibly make you sick to your stomach. So avoid, I recommend avoiding that. If you want to take pain medication, always consult with your doctor about what would be appropriate before the marathon. Also to help avoid digestion issues, make sure you are taking an adequate amount of water in during the race and drink when you are thirsty. Another, you also, if you have digestion issues, you don't necessarily just have to chow down on the carbs you are taking in or take that sports gel really fast. I would take it at a slower rate. So if it takes you over a mile to take that one sport gel, you just have to gradually take it, do it, because that might ease, that might help you digest that gel better. So taking it in slowly, that could help you, especially if you are prone to having stomach issues on race day. Like I said earlier, Gatorade bothers me, so I just avoid Gatorade altogether. And I do definitely take the sports gels at least every 45 minutes throughout the race. But you could experiment with that too if you're having digestion issues. Maybe try to eliminate, if you are taking Gatorade currently, maybe try to eliminate Gatorade and just do some sort of carbs and sports gel. You just have to experiment and figure out what is right for you because everybody is different in this area of taking in carbs. And only take in carbs that you are familiar with on your training runs. Don't take anything new on race day, so don't take any new gels on the course or new carbs. Only do what you are used to and know what's going to work with your digestion system. So it's always good to trial and error to see what's going to work with you on how you're going to digest certain carbs. Do that during your training runs and that could help eliminate some of the issues that you might face on race day when it comes to being nauseous and having digestion issues. The next common fear during a marathon is what if I have to go to the bathroom during the race? This was always a big fear of mine and I was really nervous about it and had a lot of anxiety about it as a new marathon runner. I'm like, oh, what if I have to go to the bathroom on race day? It's what that slows me down so much. From experience, I wouldn't worry about having to go to the bathroom because your body's gonna do what's gonna do. It's best not to hold it because if you hold it, it might be too late. This is not going to the bathroom during a marathon, something I do not worry about anymore. If I feel the urge to go and I see a porter potty, I'm going to go. Sometimes you just don't know when the next porter potty is going to be. It might not be at the next water station. It might be a few miles down the road. This depends on the marathon and how many porter potties they put on their course. So don't wait before it's too late because you might regret that. So if you have to go and you see a porter potty nearby, go. A next common fear that marathon runners face is what if the weather is bad? Just know that most races will try to have the race if possible. So if it's going to be raining or if it's going to be hot or if it's going to be really cold, they will do whatever they can to try to have the race. But they just might be monitoring people more, more carefully in hotter conditions, especially in hotter conditions. They will probably be people more closely and might pull people off the course if they look like they're suffering from heat illness. I know races will cancel the race if it's storming or if there is extreme conditions. Like if there was like a heat advisory or if there was like a thunderstorm or if it was lightning out or if there was a huge snowstorm or like a tornado or like a hurricane or anything, they are probably going to cancel the race. And that's good because it is not worth risking your life in extreme conditions just to go to a marathon because there's always other marathons. In these situations, just try to sign up for a marathon that's maybe a, a few weeks later. If you're trained for it, I would definitely suggest signing up for another one. It's just sometimes it's unfortunate that these things happen but just know that most of the time they don't. So you, your chances are good that they're going to have the race. So don't worry about it. Things happen. And there's always more races you can sign up for. The weather is not ideal. Always pack for different types of weather. So make sure you pack colder weather clothes or anything that's going to be for the cold 
or anything you might want to take if it's rainy outside or if it's going to be hot, pack for those situations too of those types of weather. So always have a backup in clothing and different items for different weather conditions. If you are unsure what to pack on race day, make sure you watch the video up above. It's also linked in the description below on what to pack on marathon race day. I also have a free checklist that you can download. It's also in the link below to help you know what to pack on race day. Another common fear that marathon runners face is what if I cannot stay on pace during race day? Just, it's always a good idea to have a plan B if you don't think you're going to hit your race goal. So during training, if it is not going based upon what you want to run your marathon in, like the goal you want to run a marathon in, sometimes it is best to evaluate how your training is going to see if it's going to be realistic for you to hit that race goal. If having a marathon race day goal is just way too much pressure for you, and you're gonna beat yourself up because you're not gonna hit that goal, I suggest you have an open mind about your marathon race goal. It might be best just to evaluate during the first few miles if you're wanting to go for a certain goal or not. So always have a backup plan and have an open mind to how you want to run your race. Things are not always gonna go perfectly and it's always good to have a plan B. If all else fails and you are just not feeling great, Sometimes the goal should be just to finish. I've had that goal too. I've had it marathons where I just didn't feel the best. So my goal was just to finish it. And that's okay. You're not always going to have, every marathon's not always going to be your best marathon. Eventually you're going to probably figure that out. If you keep running marathons that you're going to probably have one that's not the best eventually. If this is your first marathon, I would recommend maybe just having a goal of finishing the race. I mean, you can have set, you can have an idea of the kind of pace you want to run, but your main goal should just be finishing it. And then from there, for your next marathon, you can set more of a goal that you would like to reach. This is going to give you an idea of how to gauge where you are at on based on how you could maybe finish your next race. Just know if you do have a bad race, there are always other races and there's always next time. So don't beat yourself up. And just be hopeful and positive about other races that you plan to run in the future. Another common fear that runners have is what if I get an injury? If you get an injury before the race, I recommend that you consult with your doctor or your physical therapist about a plan of action of what would be best for you on how to heal and recover from that injury. If you are having a lot of pain and it feels like an injury is coming on, I would also take some time off to away from training just to know just so you can recover a little bit because sometimes just taking a few days off actually ease your pain and maybe it wasn't an injury after all but always consult with your doctor about everything that is the number one thing that you need to do is because they are trained in that area to know exactly how to treat injuries and what the best plan of action is for your particular issue as long as you can get one of your long runs in you will probably be able to run the marathon. Just know that it might not be, it might not be your marathon goal that you originally had, but you can have the goal of just finishing the race and see how it goes. So at least get, and I do recommend at least running a long run of 16 miles before you even think about running a marathon. I preferably like at least 18 to 20, but you probably could get by with 16. But just be careful about it and use common sense when it comes to running the marathon. So if you feel like an injury is coming on during the marathon, it really is your call if you think you should finish the race. Just know it is normal to feel pain and tightness when you are running a race. That is completely normal. It's going to be painful. It's going to hurt. But sometimes you just know if something's more serious than that ache and that pain and the tightness. Use your gut feeling on this. So if you really feel like it's an injury, and you're going to be injured, maybe not finish, or maybe do a lot more walking to make sure it's not going to hurt it worse. So if it only hurts when you run and you can walk, maybe do more walking to finish the race, you're really determined to finish the race. You could walk. There's nothing wrong with walking during the race, just so you know. 
But in reality, if you feel like it is something really serious and if it's hurting when you walk, it's hurting when you run, you probably should just not finish the race. As hard as it is to say this to somebody and how hard it would be for myself, sometimes it's best just to not finish the race. I mean, it. I know it's hard. It's very hard. I would, I would have the same feeling. I would, I'm very stubborn and I would probably do what I could to try to finish. Use common sense because sometimes if you push through that seriousness of an injury, it could make it worse and you could be out for a really long time from running. And that is the last thing that you want to do. So you be, use common sense. If you have to let somebody evaluate you like someone that's a medical, there are sometimes medical professionals out on the course, have, talk to them and let them evaluate you to see if it would be wise to keep going. Consult with them. They, they know a lot about injuries. So it's really your call, but if it's very serious, definitely talk to someone on the sideline that is a medical professional that could treat your injury. Another common fear on race day is what if I do not finish the race? First of all, <laughs> you do not want to be thinking that before you even start the race. You want to be positive throughout the whole race. If you have a negative thought creeping up on you that you might not be able to finish, get it out of your mind and replace it with a positive. Positive thoughts only during the marathon. Say, I can do this. I have the training in. I know I can finish this race. Whatever mantra or mental tricks that work for you, use them. If you want to hear some mental tricks about long runs and mantras that could help you, during your training or during the marathon, make sure you check out my video above or in the description below about six mental tricks to help you get through your long runs. Now, there are some legit reasons why you shouldn't finish the race sometimes, such as an injury or an illness. Feeling really ill or having a serious injury are definitely signs that you probably shouldn't finish the race. The next common fear that runners often have before a marathon what if I didn't do all of my training before the marathon? You know that things happen sometimes and you might have to miss some long runs. Whether it's illness, injury, you're, if you're a busy mom or dad, sometimes things happen and you can't get, get that long run in. You know, as long as you were able to complete most of your training and are willing to adapt, you will most likely probably to be able to still run the marathon. So if you got some of your training in, you might be able to go to the marathon and finish it, but I wouldn't have a specific goal in mind. It should be just to finish the race. If you just were able only to complete some of the training, just definitely going to have to readjust your marathon goal if you didn't feel like you had a very good training cycle. I would say if you at least didn't do one 16 mile long run, you shouldn't run the marathon. You should drop down to the half marathon. Another common race day fear that marathon runners often have is what if I hit the wall during the marathon? Now, if you continue to run marathons, just know that it is very possible that you will probably eventually hit the wall at some point. If you hit the wall during the race, you will just have to slow your pace down and you might have to walk at some point. And that's okay. You can still, even if you hit the wall, you still can finish the race but it just might not be the goal that you wanted. And that's all right. Marathons take practice and experience to figure out a strategy that works for you. Even if you hit the wall, keep taking your energy gels and sipping water. I have had times during a marathon where I thought I was hitting the wall. So I slowed down my pace a little bit and then I tried picking up the pace again and I got, and I started feeling a sense of energy come back. Some of that times that is possible and sometimes that happens. Sometimes that during certain points in your long runs or during the marathon, you might feel like crap. And then in a couple miles, you might start feeling better again. Just know that that happens a lot during a marathon. It really could possibly happen to you. Just keep that in mind and keep that in the back of your head that that is possible that you could have a start having a better marathon again. Just know that that isn't always the case. Sometimes you might just not feel good the rest of the race. You just never know. Sometimes marathons can surprise you and you have to have an open mind about everything. But just know that it happens. You may or may not feel better as the race goes on. So if that happens to you and you just feel like crap, just reevaluate your goal 
and just focus on finishing the race. And always remember that there are more marathons that you can look forward to in the future and you will probably have better marathons. What are your fears on marathon race day? Please comment below. I would love to hear your feedback on this. Make sure you watch the next video on your screen about five tips to avoid hitting the wall during a marathon.